What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the absolute insanity craziness that happened today, that went down today in the stock market, starting off with the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ, we're going to be talking about that, as well as what did I personally do in terms of my trades, did I take any trades today, day trades, am I buying in for some swing trades, my philosophy right now, what I'm thinking what's going through my head we're going to be talking about that in today's video as well as just breaking down some stocks looking at what happened today in terms of individual stocks large caps smaller caps all of that fun stuff so before we get into the topic for everybody out there that enjoys these videos you find value in the content here you find the videos helpful feel free to go down below hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you're actually new to the channel i have two links down below in the description box for you one of them being the strive smart discord group and the other one being the strive smart facebook group both of those are great communities a lot of value in there they're 100 free of charge and again they're linked down below in the description box so let's talk about what happened today and oh boy guys it was probably one of the bloodiest days on Wall Street that I can remember from recent memory, right? I don't know if any single day, I think a single day might have been worse than this, but I'm not sure if a single day was worse than what we saw today back during the October to December um, time period where we saw that initial correction. I could be wrong, but I think today was actually worse than what we saw in a given day back then. But nonetheless, the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day down 69 points, down 2.4% percent absolutely insane there guys the dow jones down about 616 points at the close down about 2.4 percent 2.38 to be exact so right around the same in terms of percentage drop as the s p 500 but this is where it gets very crazy guys the nasdaq was not down three percent it was down nearly four percent at 3.65 at the close down 275 points nearly 300 points on the day this is absolutely unbelievable and you can guess there's a couple of stocks that were actually down a ton today in terms of some tech stocks and the nasdaq is a tech heavy index which kind of explains why it did much worse than the s p and the dow jones so why did the market fall very aggressively today right for those of you all that watched my video earlier today i uploaded a video talking about what was going on with China and the trade war and Trump. And just kind of to uh, just summarize that again in this video, for those of you guys that didn't catch it in the earlier one, well, China, they retaliated with tariffs of their own. So they're putting a 25% tariff on goods that were originally being... Um, priced at a 5 to 10% tariff. So this is on $60 billion of goods, if I am remembering correctly. And these tariffs go into effect on June 1st. So we talked about last week how maybe China will retaliate. I kind of thought they were going to retaliate. I didn't think they were going to just back down to the U.S. and Trump. And what do you know? Today, they retaliated and the markets took it in a very, very drastic way. So that is, you know, the overall rundown. Let's just take a look of, at some technicals here on the major markets. The S&P, again, down 70 points. Seems like we are holding the 180 SMA support here on the 184 hour chart, as well as an old resistance from back in the beginning of, um, you know, towards the end, actually, of February in 2019 at around 2815. Right around this level is the support we are currently trending at. So tomorrow, 
tomorrow for the continuation of the downtrend, which I think could potentially happen, right? If we broke this level here, the 180 SMA and the support at around 28.15, that's going to be a massive, massive indication to me that we're going down to the next support level, which in this case might honestly be around, you know, I guess you could say 27.40. And if we just pull out this drawing tool, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We can see if we sell off there, we may be going back down to about 2740 on the SPX. And if we're just hopping on the five day, five minute, what I'm personally seeing here is with the gap down that we saw this morning, that was really just the continuation of this pattern on the five day, five minute. We briefly broke out of it on Friday. We got rejected down to a lower low. Everything is looking intact in terms of this pattern. And just take a look on the one day one minute you know how terrible of a day this was we gapped down the entire day we were trending down we got some hope for a reversal here the bullish cross but we ultimately got pushed down again pretty aggressively where I actually took a little trade on TVIX during this time period this is one of my bigger trades for the day and we ended up on a little downswing, right? So that's the SPX. If we're going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, same exact thing on the one day, one minute. Downtrending, we had some hope for a reversal for some upside here. Got rejected pretty hard. Ended up closing under the moving averages, the 180 and the 50 in terms of the simple moving averages. So going over to the 184 hour chart, we broke the 25,500 level of support very quickly today. We ended up closing at about 25,300, putting us in the middle of this horizontal channel from about $25,000 up to about twenty-five. dollars Five. So this 500 point window is where we're trading right now, pretty much dead smack in the middle of it. And for tomorrow, if we sell off more, this is the support we're going to be watching, 25,000 flat. Let's say we start to have um, some green upside for tomorrow, maybe a little bit of a breather for the markets in terms of this terrible bloody day we had today. The resistance we're going to be testing is at about 25,500. So not too crazy of a day. Psych. It was a crazy day, guys. I almost got you there, but it was a crazy day. It was a crazy day to say the least. So the NASDAQ, guys, this one has been blowing through support after support after support. We ended up breaking the 7,500 level. We crushed through that. Now it seems like we're testing roughly 73.30 right around this level here. It looks like we're breaking under that. And we may be testing the next one, which is at around 7,300. So this is an area where it can kind of get funky for the NASDAQ, right? Because if we do break, let's say, into the 72s, right? There's not really a support in sight after that until we get back down to the $6,000 level. So these are levels where... The NQ, the NASDAQ, needs to hold above for this long trajectory, the upwards push that we've been on over the past couple of months for that to continue, right? If we start to get down here, that's going to be pretty ugly in terms of the NASDAQ. So overall today, guys, we had a pretty, pretty, pretty massive sell-off to say the least, right? So now that we have this big sell-off in the books, what I'm thinking is we may see a little bit of a push-up tomorrow. Am I saying all these losses are going to be gained back tomorrow? I highly doubt that, right? I would not really say that we're going to pop up all the way here tomorrow, by any shadow of the doubt, right? But what I do think could happen is we pop up a bit, maybe back up, let's say, 20, 30 points from where we are now, because mind you, we had nearly a 75-point loss in one day. That's crazy to me, right, in the SPX, right? So if we get, you know, $20, $30 of that, if we get it back for a little pump up here before the continuation of the downtrend, because ultimately I think the volatility will continue here, you know, I think that's pretty reasonable to think that, right? But also, we might not even get a pushback. Who knows? We might gap down even further tomorrow. We might crack into the $2,700 level. That would be um, a possibility as well. And if that happens, right, volatility is really going to start to kick in. And the VIX here is the volatility index pretty much. And when this one's flying up high in terms of price, that is when volatility in the markets are turbulent, right? We can see 
on this day, the 7th of May, take a look at the VIX, guys. It went from literally 15 at the close of the previous session all the way up to nearly 22. That was a 7-point move. And today, we ended up closing on the VIX at nearly $16 this past trading day. And today, we got all the way up to nearly 21.30. So, very similar pop up in terms of the VIX and it makes sense because take a look at the markets right the markets are down like crazy so just keep an eye on the VIX tomorrow let's say VIX is trending up let's say the S&P selling off we might have another turbulent volatile big sell-off day in store so that's what my opinions are that's what I am looking at so now let's hop into the trading update portion of this video. For all you that have been following me for a couple of days, weeks, whatever, you know that I was in a couple of swing trades last week, Procter & Gamble, and for the past couple of weeks at that. So I was in Procter & Gamble, Google, Facebook. Took a loss on Google, Facebook. Took a little profit on Procter & Gamble. And I told you guys on Friday's video and on Sunday's video that I was heading into the weekend all cash, right? All cash, all cash. And this is something that I'm really happy that I did, right? Because if I held on to Facebook, Google, I would have been heavier in the red right now in these positions, which is one of my reasons as to why I ended up selling out of those positions in the first place. Because I noticed Trump sent that tweet last Sunday. I was thinking to myself, okay, he sent the tweet. The market's be becoming a bit volatile. I'm holding Facebook and Google here. I'm not up on the positions, really. I'm not down too much. This might be a good time to just sell out of them and maybe get back in after some of this news clears up, right, in, in terms of the trade tweet that we got last Sunday. And I made the right decision. Things haven't really cleared up yet, but I'm still in that mindset of, Waiting to see when things clear up, waiting to see when the market finds a bottom. And once that does happen, right, if it happens in the near term future, there's going to be some opportunities in some of these stocks that have gotten hammered that have a lot of margin of profit to offer in terms of a swing trade if the markets and if, if, if the markets reverse, right? That's kind of, um, you just, you just like my, my whole trading, uh, thoughts at this point in time so what did i do today right in terms of my trading so the spx again downtrended we can see from this point in time down to here this is a time period where you know volatility was pumping tvix was slowly upgrade or uptrending here right from about 27 all the way up to around 29 so i initially got into tvix on this pullback that we saw from nearly 29.30 down to about 27.90 we got the higher low confirmation here from the previous pretty much holding the trend from pre-market hours we started to push up making little staircases little staircases on the 180 sma pushing up and i pretty much just took a position at at around $28.15. And this is not one that I made a crap ton of return on, but it was, if I show you guys here on the drawing tool, from about $28 to the to about a $29 exit, right? I ended up getting out roughly under this level of resistance from the previous pump up. We can see roughly here I made about a 3 to 3.2% 3 in terms of this. And again, these are rough entry exit points. I don't remember exactly where I ended up getting in, but that's just a rough entry exit. So this first trade was about 3 4%. Then I got back into TVIX because I was watching the markets here as the S&P was starting to make a little run there towards the end of the day. I got back into TVIX here on the big pop above this uh, 50 SMA, the little bullish uh, you know, pattern that we saw here, the bullish breakout. Ended up getting in at about 28.39, roughly 28.40. And I just wrote it back up to this resistance, grabbing another 2% out of it. So roughly today, about a 4 5% profit day on TVIX, just hopping out of it in and out of it a couple of different times. And I didn't, to be honest with you, take any new swing positions, right? I'm mostly in cash. I'm waiting to see when the markets are looking to reverse. Once this trade deal maybe gets done or some news comes out regarding it, right? 
that is when the markets might settle down and that would be a good opportunity like I said a couple of minutes ago so that's what I did in terms of my trading today my philosophy again is waiting for swings waiting for the potential bottom here and just day trading volatility day in and day out because guys the overall trend of the market right now is heading down and swing trading a down overall downtrending trend especially in the overall markets that's pretty um dangerous and that's something that i just don't want to do right now and i totally feel comfortable just sitting on cash and just waiting guys again sometimes the best trade is not making any trade whatsoever so that is what ended up happening today right and tvix is definitely one that i'm going to be watching here day in and day out as volatility does expect to continue right so some stocks that i'm just keeping my eyes on on pending reversals right now are apple apple got crushed so bad today guys down six percent down about twelve dollars this is actually getting back down to a decent value right now i checked the pe ratio it's at about 15 right now and the markets last time i checked were at around 20 so just strictly off pe right now apple with this big about 10 15 percent drop it's getting back to a decent value right at these point at this point in time you know, I guess you can argue that Apple was either fair valued or maybe slightly overvalued in terms of, you know, PE. So now, you know, if we continue to fall down to the 170s, this would be very uh, ideal for me, honestly. I would like to start buying some more shares, maybe long, long term on Apple for the dividend it has, for the dividend growth it's providing. The dividend growth is very, very phenomenal on Apple. And of course, I might even pick up some swing trading shares if they do get that low. So Apple, you know, Google, I don't even have to go over this, guys. I'm sure a lot of you already saw Google. You know, this one's just been getting tanked, right? Google's opening up a pretty decent you know, potential entry point for a long-term play coming up soon, especially if it creeps to the 900s, guys. You know, that would be pretty crazy for a longer-term, um, you know, growth play there. Microsoft ended up taking another 3% hit today right on the 180 SMA support. This could be a pretty decent potential play if it bounces up. But again, if the markets continue to trend down, that's likely not going to happen. Uh, you know, and, and, and to talk a little bit about some value plays just to show you guys in times of turmoil a lot of these quote-unquote safer stocks right more of these you know blue chip companies i guess you can say like the cooks the j and j's right the apples not really apple um you know the mcdonald's right these are companies that kind of weather the storm in a portfolio in terms of times like this right let's just take a look at some of their performances today right the market was extremely bloody at&t literally down 0.5 percent down 15 cents on the day pretty pretty good for weathering the storm right coca-cola down 14 cents down 0.3 percent on the day again pretty good at weathering the storm procter and gamble literally closed the day up 10 cents up 0.1 percent pretty good at weathering the storm let me think on the top of my head some other value plays right j and j this one got hit a bit harder but 1.3 percent still pretty decent right mcdonald's you know down 0.5 percent so those are just a couple that kind of weather the storm in your portfolio in the long-term portfolio they provide cash flow and sometimes during periods like this not all the time right they're pretty stagnant. They're doing well compared to some other growth plays, right? So that is it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment. Let me know how you did today. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are we going to continue to go down? I would love to know what you guys think about that. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, hit that red button, that notification bell as well. So you're subscribed to the channel and you're notified every single time that I upload a video. And if you haven't checked out my recent video, my previous video going deeper into depth on China, US, my thoughts on the market, Go check it out. It'll be carded up, linked up right here. You'll be able to see it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.